This is Will water. Here. It, uh, you can't take a drink, can you? No. No, I, uh, I've, been, I've seen reports that say an alcoholic can be taught to be a social drinker again, but it isn't so because his, his body never really changes. Yeah. I think there's some damage that's done that never can be set right again. Mm -hmm. And if you ever drank, I think I'd be probably be back to drinking too much again. And I like life too much without it now. Now that I'm completely free of it, I don't have any desire for to ever drink again. Mm -hmm. did, did anybody like an agent or anyone ever warn you to stop drinking or you'd ruin your career? No, uh, but a very dear friend of mine did. Yeah. About four years ago, I believe. Very dear friend of mine. And it's amazing how deluded I was because I, I, uh, I really wasn't very nice about it. And I said, that's my business. I enjoy it. And that's my business. I don't think you have any right. Mm -hmm. And the poor man cried. And I couldn't yeah. see it. It took me a long, long time to understand you know, that he was seeing me objectively. And I was totally deluded about it. At, at the later point, when you did an agent or anyone ever warn you not to admit that you were an alcoholic oh, because that would ruin boy. your career? Many, many. Really? Of them. Yes, they don't. <laughs> please don't do that. They didn't care if you didn't quit, but they just didn't want you to talk about <laughs> it. Please don't talk about it. Really? Well, I didn't know, you yeah. know what, might have, what kind of reaction I might get. I must say I've received thousands of letters and not one negative letter from anyone. Mm -hmm. Not one. Which I think shows that at least we're changing. That it doesn't have the stigma that it used to have. I hope you don't mind my probing you on this. Or, Not at all. Because uh, I, I knew you did agree to talk about it. So if it looks prurient on my part, uh, it isn't. I, I just think it's fascinating. Can you be prurient about alcohol? I didn't know that. I th does, that have to, <laughs> does, does prurient have to be I sex? I didn't remember I don't that. know. I always thought it Let's did. Let's check on the dictionary. <laughs> Are you addicted to that? Um, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yes, I don't know what yes, I meant. <laughs> my tolerance level isn't what it was. But, <laughs> <laughs> but when it increases, look out. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, I had a family on this show, it was um, re really quite a gripping interview to do and certainly mm. to watch, who on one of those alcohol shows and with, where the mother and the father and the, the daughter who had found the mother with a bullet in her head having, having tried to kill herself. And um, I wonder why some alcoholics try suicide and others don't. Were, were you ever near suicide? No, although I've, I've, it, I thought of it at times. I think almost every alcoholic does. When they're, when they're it's a terrible depressant to, the, to your brain. Uh -huh. Terrible depressant. A lot of, uh, about 50% of the suicides in the United States are alcohol related, but they're not all alcoholics. Yeah. If a set of circumstances hits a human being, someone hears maybe that he might be fired, mm -hmm. or he has something on his mind and drinks a little, they can fall into a depressed state where they're not thinking clearly and commit suicide, and it has happened. They're not all alcoholics, but it, it is alcohol-related. Do you wish that booze were not a subject for humor? I do now, and I've played my share of comedy drunks. Uh -huh. I did on Broadway, as a matter of fact, in a review. It was my big thing to come out in one and do a drunk. Do you wish Dean Martin would let up on the booze humor? I'd, I don't like to get that narrow-minded about it, really. I, yeah. uh, I don't like to be a crusader or a, have missionary zeal about yeah. booze. A lot of people can drink socially and uh, they don't have any propensity towards alcoholism, they'll never become alcoholics. Yeah. There are a lot of non-alcoholic, irresponsible drinkers mm -hmm. who drive and do such things as that. Yeah. But uh, unless booze could just disappear from the face of the earth, I don't think there's anything can be done about it. Did you drive when you were drunk? I have. Yeah. Yes, I have. Fortunately, nothing ever happened to did, me. Did you roll a car over once, uh, alone? Was that I had a wreck in a sports car that was not related to alcohol. <laughs> I it? happened to be sober at the time. Gee, there's a negative a lesson in that, I guess. Yes. Sure. Well, it, it, can you tell what the worst aspect of it is when, when you're drunk? Is it looking back over it all? Um, is it the damage you do to yourself? Is it the damage you do to your wife or your kids? <clears> or, uh, well, all of that, all of that is a, is a terrible thing because you do have terrible guilt mm -hmm. and terrible shame. What really happens is that. Uh, most of us have fairly high values, and we get into characterological conflict. Our, our behavior is in conflict with our values, and, we, and it's a guilt-producing thing. But you're really in a grip of something you cannot do anything about, mm -hmm. cannot do anything about, without help. 
You said your behavior is in conflict with your values. I mean, is it as simple as the fact that you, your parents would be ashamed of you if they saw what you would, had become of you? That did, did it harken back to your that and, fairly strict and it, upbringing, or was it a strict? I th yes, I think it was a strict upbringing. Yeah. I think yeah, I was raised in the church, in the Presbyterian church. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I didn't drink much at all in my twenties. Mm -hmm. I was in my middle thirties before I even started, and then it was social. You know, I was I was one of those people who was bound to be trapped and didn't know. Just had no way of knowing. That's why I'm talking about it now. There, there are ways to know. Is there a test people can take, or will there ever be, where they take a piece of litmus paper or something and find out if you're a potential alcoholic? I think probably. They're, they're, just in the last year, they found out an awful lot about what it does physically, how it affects people who, who might be alcoholics. I think the day will come. Whether they'll ever find out exactly what causes it, it seems to be a, a variety of factors, uh, hormonal chemistry, glandular, something to do with the brain cells. There are a number of things that make a human being adapt to it. And they, they, they get to the place where they like the calories from alcohol because they're very easy to assimilate. And everything else is too hard to assimilate. Alcohol, you know, diffuses across your brain instantly. Yeah, yeah. And it just is easier to, and people can go for weeks and weeks just on the calories from alcohol and no other food. Now, how long was your siege? bad drinking years? That's very hard for me to say. Very hard. I would imagine about seven years. Mm -hmm. now, that's my own guess, and I'm probably being very conservative yeah. about it myself. As someone who observed me over that time, I say, are you kidding? <laughs> Does it show in your liver? It, uh, fortunately, I didn't have any damage, mm -hmm. any damage. It was slightly enlarged mm -hmm. and would have gone into, the, the cells in your liver will puff up yeah. to try and take on the job of assimilating all that acid alcohol that's mm -hmm. going into the system, and it just can't. And eventually, cells will begin to die. And then you're in cirrhosis of the liver, and you're dead. When you were in the haze of being, uh, when you were boozing, if forgive the crude term, uh, when you were drinking, uh, could you see through that haze people's attitude changing toward you? And People no. beginning to not no, want to come no. over to the house in the evening or anymore. And well, the people who came over yeah. liked to drink as much as I did. You attract that sort of person. That, I usually drank at home. I must yeah. say, I wasn't a, a swinger or anything like that. I just drank at home. Mm -hmm. uh, got grandiose and verbose. Loved to debate things like religion and all those things. And now I go to parties, cocktail parties, where I don't drink, and to stand off objectively and watch the transition of a cocktail party mm -hmm. between 0.25, you know, uh, per millimeter, I guess it is, blood alcohol, as it goes up, the decibels, it gets louder and louder in the room. Suddenly people are talking about politics and religion and solving Watergate. Yeah. And then a few more drinks a couple of hours later, and it's really loud, and a lot of hearty laughter and back slapping and hugging, mm -hmm. and the guys are starting to tell dirty jokes. The ones they wouldn't tell otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> and then later in the evening, about 80% of those people will be very euphoric and happy, but about 20% will either be angry or very sad. You'll see people sitting down crying and saying, leave me alone, you don't understand, or right. somebody will get in a terrible fight. Can you tell which ones are the problem drinkers? Well, the ones who stay till the party is over and then some usually are the problem drinkers. Yeah. Maybe headed for for addiction, but there are a lot of heavy drinkers who are doing a lot of damage to their liver and to their brain who are not alcoholics, are not addicts. Not technically alcoholics, but, yeah. are, but are damaging themselves with liquor. Yes, with heavy uh, drinking. See. 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 That's, that's, the, that's the tough part, is to say, I am an alcoholic, isn't it? It really is. It's the that hardest part of treatment. No matter how much help you have, the, the job is to get somebody to admit that they mm -hmm. can't handle it. They have no control over alcohol if they drink. How many members does AA have in, in America? In I've America? read that it's about 250,000. Yeah. I don't know whether that's so or not. I just, I just read it. But uh, it seems to me that AA is having better luck than most. Yeah. Although there are a few really up-to-date treatment centers around the country that are doing a marvelous job. I went mm -hmm. last, as I said, last May and, and studied for three weeks as a, as a therapist, kind of intern. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's marvelous to see it happen, to see people really get free of it and know that, the, that life's going to change for them. I mean, they take an interest in life. Yeah. I've seen people who had long ago let their hobbies, everything they used to do, 
go by the boards because drinking took up a, such a big hunk of their day. And they get their energy back and their zest for life and even a, a certain spirituality in their lives comes back. And they're different people. And they say, huh, I've, I've heard people actually say, I'm glad I was an alcoholic. It's like the idea I that I learned so much about myself. Yeah, going through the fire. Yes. Do they really say, really are you Van Dyke? What did you have to drink for? You had everything. Do you get that attitude from people? That's true, as if something tragic had to happen. Mm -hmm. to, uh, that's the common belief about alcoholism, unfortunately. Yeah. That there's something <clears throat> terribly wrong in your life or you wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But an alcoholic drinks for the same reasons that the social drinker does. Relief from tension and stress, to be, feel comfortable with strange people, to c lubricate social intercourse. Really, is what it is. Do you envy me that I can take a drink? Um, and that, no, I know, went I'll... through about a year, as I guess most, most recovering alcoholics do. It takes a year for your system to get back to where it was before, mm -hmm. uh, really resenting it sometimes so other people could drink. Now I, I have no desire to drink, yeah. and I don't envy people who do at all. Yeah, that's good. We have message, we'll be right back.